Welcome to the third section of this course. In this section, we are going to explore a special, widely used creational design pattern, dependency injection. We will begin this course with an introduction to dependency injection in general. We are going to study its theory, its use cases, and its importance. In the next video, we will create a custom DI container by ourselves. You will then learn a little bit about decorators and how we can take advantage of their core strengths to improve our container's functionality. After you have grasped the inner workings of a container, we are going to leave the custom one behind and use a thoroughly tested open source DI container called Inversify.js. With that container, we will also test dependency scopes like Singleton and Transient. We are finally ready to begin this section by introducing dependency injection. This is going to be a pretty introductory video of dependency injection, also termed DI for short. A very simple example will follow to set you off on the right foot for understanding the principle. When incorporating dependency injection in your application, the use of new is not allowed. It's quite obvious to everyone that has ever written an object-oriented application that without new, you can't have an OOP app. Because of course, when you have classes and objects, you need a way to instantiate them. Unless of course you're relying solely on statics, but that's not something anyone would prefer. So this rule is not by any means an absolute. You are indeed allowed to new up objects. Just be careful not to abuse the new keyword. If you have a value object, for example, or a service data object, or generally a short lived object, that does not depend on other entities of your app, you are free to instantiate it using new whenever you want. Factories are also welcome to use new to create new instances, of course, because that's what they're made for. They're made to create new instances of objects that have little to no dependencies to real entities in your application. What is strict is that you shouldn't be using new to instantiate dependencies. So if you find yourself creating instances of your dependencies in your class's constructor, you are doing it wrong and you are violating the pattern. Now let's take a look at the internals of a dependency injection container and why we need one. This is an example dependency tree from a real world application. Let's say that we have a profile service that depends on three other components. A user service that's responsible for fetching details about a user an HTTP client whose responsibility is to perform HTTP requests to a third party API, and finally, a class that contains the endpoints that the HTTP client is supposed to hit. Notice that each and every one of these components has a single responsibility. The single responsibility principle is prevalent in most patterns. The user service also has an HTTP client and an authentication service dependencies while the HTTP client may depend on something like an XML HTTP request backend. Let's see how we would go about doing this using the traditional approach without implementing dependency injection. We would probably instantiate the dependencies in the constructor using new like this. But notice that in order to do that, you would need to know how each one is initialized. You need to know, for example, that the user service needs an instance of the auth service and the HTTP client. Without them, the constructor would fail. So if we used this snippet, we would get an error saying that we can't call the user service constructor without passing any arguments at all. The deeper your dependency tree goes, the harder this gets. What does dependency injection suggest? It suggests that we inverse this flow of control and request the dependencies in the constructor like this. Notice that we are no longer using new to create instances of the dependencies. The dependencies are already passed over to the constructor already initialized. Using this approach, the profile service class is no longer responsible for initializing itself. It does not need to know how to create instances of its dependencies anymore because it receives them from the constructor already initialized. But if the profile service does not initialize its dependencies and it doesn't know how to do so, then who does? We are obviously missing a piece of the puzzle and that's where the DI container comes in. 
the DI container is the entity that knows how to make all these work. This is how the container looks like. Every time you create a new component in your application, you register it with the container. That way, it knows exactly how each component is initialized. It knows, for example, that the profile service needs an instance of the user service, the HTTP client, and the endpoints class in order to work. The container then provides an interface for you to retrieve an instance of each component with all its dependencies met.